Hey guys, Jamin here with PC Monkey. I'm bringing you another do-it-yourself computer video today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot if your key or keys are not working or if your entire keyboard is not working. If that's not your issue and you don't know what video you should be on, leave me a comment. I can direct you to the right one. This video is just for if everything else in your computer is working, it's booting up correctly, Windows is loading correctly, uh, but a key or keys are not working or again, your entire keyboard is not working. As with any of my videos, if you have any questions or comments, check out the frequently asked questions below first. That could save you some time getting an answer. If you don't see your question there and you need to leave me one, I do try to get back to you a few times a day at least. For starters, if a key or keys are not working, ask yourself, does a key feel like it's broken? If it feels broken and it's not going down correctly, it's not popping up correctly, it's loose, it's wobbly. If it feels broken, most likely your fix is going to be mechanical. Most likely there's something under it that needs to be cleaned. Uh, something came loose or something's broken. Uh, so in the first part of the video right now, I'm going to show you how to address a key that needs to be removed and cleaned possibly and then installed again correctly without breaking it. So I'm going to take my small flathead screwdriver. I'm going to place it in between the key cap, which is this top part, and the retainer clip underneath. And the idea here is to hold down the retainer clip while I take off my key cap so that the clip doesn't bend and break as I peel it off. So go slow, feel your way out. You can see that came off fairly easily. And as you can see, my screwdriver is holding down that clip. Uh, watch out for this rubber spring that's only held on by glue and it's very hard to get back down if you do rip it up or damage it. Uh, the retainer clip is right here. It's usually white or black. Uh, this one's sort of a, a clear color. And it's held down generally the same way. There'll be either four metal pins near each corner, or it will look like this. There'll be two metal pins near two of the corners, and then on the opposite side, there'll be one metal bracket in the middle, and that's how this is held down. Now, what I'm gonna try to do to take this up is find the pins closest to the edge, which in this case are the ones up top. And side note, if you have one center metal clip, you're gonna be going for the opposite uh, two pins. And I'm gonna press up with my fingernail, try to get some more give, while I slowly try to pry the plastic out from under the metal. Uh, very dangerous, you could easily break it. If you do break it, it'll probably be at this point. So I'll take it off and then I'll show you real quick what it looks like, what we're watching out for. So press up, gently pull that out. There we go, Get this over. Okay, so see these two plastic pins that poke out near the corners? That's what I was trying not to break. Uh, these are what are wedged underneath the metal clips. These are very small, very weak, very easy to break if you don't slide them out from under the metal. If you just try to pop it up, they'll snap off. So that's what I was trying not to break. So now we'll go ahead and put this back on. So we're going to go in reverse. I'm going to lay the thing down. Get the bottom underneath its metal pins first, so the opposite side that you took it off. And then once you see that it's centered enough, all you should have to do is press in on the top corners to snap it in. Just like that. And then you bring your keycap over, place it, again, try to get it centered, and then press. And it snaps into place. And that's how you would replace a normal size key. Now if you would like to see a larger key done, uh, enter, shift, space, uh, look below in the description. There will be a link there for one of those keys. They get some other things going on in there you may want to watch out for. Uh, so I've included a link down below in the description. Now if your key feels like it's not broken, or if multiple keys aren't working, odds are it's not a mechanical issue with an individual key. Odds are your keyboard needs to be repaired, or your software uh, needs to be repaired. So one of the easiest things we can shoot for now is to make sure all your updates are processed, all your drivers are updated, and I'll show you how to do that now. So to make sure your updates are run, you're going to come down to the bottom left hand of your screen and click in your search bar and type in the word updates. You should get this, check for updates under system settings, that's what we want, so hit enter or click on it. You'll see this dialog box here, Windows Update and it will either say that updates are available or it may say that updates are not available. Never trust it. Uh, there'll be a button down here if it says no updates are available to manually scan for updates. I'll always click that. Um, your update should either automatically start processing 
or like in my case here, it'll inform you of them, but there'll be a button down below to start the download process. If you have a lot of updates, you may need to scroll down. I only have three. Uh, so this is what you would want to do. So I'm going to come down here and, and click download to manually get this process started. But again, um, a, a lot of you may have it automatically start. And then there's other updates down here to download and install. So scan down through here, make sure you download anything that needs to be downloaded, uh, update anything that needs to be updated, um, and that'll get your updates going. So if after all your updates are processed and there's no more to run, and your key or keys still are not working, I'm gonna show you now how to go in and uninstall the specific driver for your keyboard. Then we're gonna restart the computer and see if that fixes it. So to find your driver, we're gonna come down here to the search bar, type in device manager. There it is, device manager under control panel, hit enter. See your keyboard is listed there, we're gonna drop that menu down. There's your keyboard driver, you're gonna right click on it and hit uninstall. Now that you've uninstalled that specific driver, when you restart your computer, that driver will reinstall itself and it'll be new and fresh and updated and hopefully what that did is reset that specific driver. If after completing these steps with your drivers, your individual key, keys, uh, or your keyboard is still not working, most likely we're looking at an issue with the keyboard itself. The only thing left to try now before replacing your keyboard is try to reseat your keyboard. What that involves is unplugging it from the motherboard and then plugging it back in, making sure that it's secure. Sometimes they come loose. Uh, so we're gonna unplug it, replug it. Hopefully that gets your keyboard working. Now keep in mind when getting at your keyboard, every computer model is gonna be different in the way you access and remove your keyboard. If you're unsure or uncomfortable getting your keyboard out based on this video, look up a teardown or disassembly video on your exact model computer. If you don't know your exact model, there'll be a video link below in the description on how to locate your computer's exact model. Once you find a teardown or disassembly video on that computer, it'll show you step by step how to access every component, one of course being your keyboard. I'll show you how to take this keyboard out so you know a few things to keep an eye out for. One thing you want to look out for in accessing your computer is you want to turn it over and look for any keyboard icons that are on the bottom of your computer. If you'll notice on the bottom of this one, you'll see several icons here. That denotes a CD. So in order to take your CD drive out, this is telling you you need to access under this panel. As well as here, there'll be a keyboard icon here, here, and here. So what that's telling you is you need to take out that screw that screw and you need to remove this panel in order to release your keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove those. Now that I've removed those, if you see here, there's another screw there with another keyboard icon under it. So I'm going to need to remove that one as well. So according to these icons, I've removed all three screws that I need to remove to get my keyboard out. So now I'm going to flip the computer over. Now for this model computer, all I need to do now is take my small pry tool and pop up my keyboard. Now be careful, because once your keyboard comes up, the ribbon cable is still connected, and this is what you're going to want to reseat. So now that my keyboard's up, I'm going to take my plastic pry tool, and this pin right here, the way that this works, is this is a small plastic clip that folds down to secure your ribbon cable, and it pops up to release your ribbon cable. So I'm gonna take my pry tool and gently pop it up. Just like that. And now the ribbon cable slides out. Now, what you wanna do is just make sure that it goes back in nice and flush, nice and flat. And once it's in there correctly, pop that back down. And that's reseating your keyboard. So those were all the troubleshooting steps that we're gonna take in this video. Uh, we made sure it wasn't a mechanical issue with your key. We updated all your drivers, processed all your updates. And then we uninstalled your specific keyboard driver and then had it reinstall upon restart. If none of these things have fixed it, including reseating of the actual keyboard, most likely your keyboard is bad and it needs to be replaced. It's a fairly inexpensive part. If you need any help finding one for your specific model, leave me a comment, I can help you out. Again, any questions or comments, check out the frequently asked questions below. Uh, like and share if this helped. And please subscribe if you enjoyed do-it-yourself computer repair. Thanks for watching, guys.